Hi everyone, I'm Greg from the Laser Channel. Join me today as I use this Xtool D1 Pro for the very first time. This is going to be a project video that's going to be perfect for the beginner. It's going to be a very fun and simple project that doesn't take a lot of time. Welcome back to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share together. Let's get started on this fun and quick project by going over the materials that I'll be using. In the intro, we know, of course, I'm using the Xtool D1 Pro, and that is featuring the 20 watt laser module on here. On the work surface area, I do have the Xtool Honeycomb. I'm using this because we're going to be doing a cutout project. We'll also see off of the laser module here, I do have the air line because I have the air assist pump installed. That's actually underneath the table to keep this work area nice and clean of any clutter. The work material that I'll be using is this sample piece of three millimeter basswood plywood. This is one of two sheets that comes with the machine and it's perfect for this beginner project. To keep the work material in place, I'm going to use my favorite red magnetic strips. I just simply place a couple of these down on this magnetic honeycomb and this way I can box in my work material and there's no chance of this shifting around during the project runtime. Once our cutout project is complete, if there's any smoke staining on the wood, I can easily and quickly clean that up using my favorite cleaner. This is LA's Totally Awesome. And if you don't have access to this, some sandpaper also works very well. To finish the project, I'm going to be using a spray polyurethane because I like the look of this nice wood grain that uh, comes from Xtool. But if you'd like to paint yours, a quick little tip is to spray a brighter color like white on the material first before painting other colors. This white undercoating is gonna really get those colors to pop and be very vibrant. Welcome to the Xtool Creative Space. In the past, I've called this the Xtool Creative Software, and that's not really accurate because this XCS software goes beyond just the application software of connecting the computer up to the machine. When we do a quick little tour here, we see that we have a lot of our typical drawing tools here on the left side of the machine. And once we have an object in the work area here, we'll find that a lot of these uh, menu options will illuminate at the top of the menu here saying that that's a tool that we can use on the object that we have placed in the work area. So far this is just software that runs the machine but this creative space is really up in this corner here where there's announcements from Xtool, updates, different things like that and projects. We're going to take a look at that in just one second but you can also find support if you're having difficulties with your machine. And then lastly, over here, if you find something that you would like to create and you want the maximum compatibility and quality to use with your Xtool machine, you can shop directly within this Xtool creative space. I'm gonna loop back to this tab here called projects. And when I click on in-app projects, we're gonna see that once my internet finally loads in, these are all the projects that you can create using the Xtool machine, uh, depending on what type of machine that you have. And you can filter all of this out by the material that you have to work with, the type of machine that you have, and also the skill level that you'd like to use. Here I found a gamepad patchwork keychain design, and I click on that. And that'll tell me it is a skill level number two. It'll tell me the default material that the author used to create this project. And when I scroll down more, it gives me step-by-step -step directions. And I can expand that out for the rest of the directions, of course. If I click on Start Project, it's going to actually load that into my software here. And here's all the components needed for creating that project. Hey, thanks for sticking with me as I took you on that quick tour of the Xtool Creative Space. 
There is definitely a lot more into it, but again, this video is just for beginners. So if you're checking this machine out, you're checking the software out, just wanted to give you a quick glimpse of what the free application software for the machine looks like. For this project though, I grabbed an image off the internet and my favorite free website for that is called pixabay.com. And this is what it looks like. I did a simple search for a jack-o'-lantern and after scrolling through many, many images, I came across this one here and I downloaded that onto my computer. And let's take a look back at the XCS software. A quick note though, if you're using these files, many of them are going to be just for personal use. So if you're going to create things for art shows and craft shows, just make sure that you're using the art files according to the license by the author on pixabay.com. Once again, back in the XCS software, to get that file loaded in, we'll go File, Import Image, and here's that jack-o'-lantern. And it wants to ask if I want to scale it down. Of course I do. And that's still pretty large and I'm going to shrink that down some more. And right now, because this is a picture file, it's only going to do engraving. And again, I mentioned that this is a cutout file that we want to do. To convert this over to something that I can do a cutout on, I'll make sure that it's selected. And I'm going to come up here to this outline tool, and it's going to do exactly that, is create an outline around everything. Now, I'm going to scroll in here, and we're going to see that that outline has a two millimeter offset, and I wanna follow the offset exactly to the image. So I'm going to type in an offset of zero, and click OK, and we'll see that that blue line now snapped directly in. And when I clicked OK, it looks like nothing happened, but when I zoom back out again and I grab this and move it off to the side, now we have a perfect cutout outline. I'm gonna highlight the original jack lantern that I loaded in and hit the delete because I no longer need that anymore. With the outlined jack lantern now selected, we'll see that we have a number of different options just beyond engraving. We can do a score line where it will rapid fire the laser and that's more for just folding paper projects. Um, but we wanna do cut. The cut settings that the software selected are right down here, the power level and the speed in millimeters per second and the number of passes or the number of times it's going to repeat this cutout. And it got those settings because when I click off to the side of the object here, it takes us back to this main side panel. We'll see that I have this selected as the material, that three millimeter basswood plywood. Because I've got that selected, that's how the software knows to use the settings that we just saw on that previous screen. It's now time to get the work material placed within the work area. And here I've got a really quick tip on getting your work material placed perfectly square within the machine. And I always like to use this back frame rail because this is the frame rail, of course, that the laser shuttles back and forth on. And for that, I take a straight flat board, place it up against that frame member, and I just move this board down until it touches the work surface. And now I can push my work material up against that, and it's nice and square. And now I can take my favorite rag magnets and place those all the way around, being careful not to shift my work material around. And one last piece right here. And while I'm still in the work area, this is when I like to set the focus of the laser. Now there's two things that we need to do on this because we are cutting out this wood. And the first is going to be this little mini scale that's on the side. When we check out the manual for the machine, it'll state that, set that number to basically the thickness of the material that we're using. In our case, three millimeter basswood. I'll just move the laser module anywhere over the work material. Now on this side, I'll flip that focusing lever down. And on the opposite side, I'll loosen up this screw here and just allow this to rest down on that focusing lever or kickstand. And I'll flip that kickstand back up into its resting place. 
and I'll put the laser module crosshairs in this upper right hand corner and I'm going to move it in both directions just a tiny little bit. And that will be the starting point for the project. Back in the computer, there is one last thing that I'd like to do before starting our very first cutout project, and that is to frame the project out. And what this is going to do is the laser module is going to trace the very outside perimeter of that object that we have, and that will make sure that we can see whether the laser module is always traveling over the work material. I'll click on that. We get this pop-up dialog box saying that we're now ready to frame that out. And I can hit the big silver button here and I can watch the laser. And it is in fact always traveling over the work material. And I can hit that button as many times as I need to here in case I needed to reposition my work material. That looks good. The only thing left to do is to put on some safety glasses and hit the start button. The job's complete and it took just over five minutes to do. Now I can move the laser module out of the way here and for the moment of truth, we'll see if it cut all the way through. Check that out, There's still a little bit of smoke underneath there. And look at that, just everything just drops out perfectly. And this is part of the reason to use a quality source of materials just like X-Tool Supply so that you get perfect cutouts like this every time. Let's take a close-up look at this because this is really, really impressive. Here's a nice close-up of our pumpkin and we'll see that everything was cut out very perfectly. Everything is smooth and just exactly as it should be. And because I was using an air assist pump on here, there's no smoke residue on the surface and that 20 watt laser module had no problems cutting through this three millimeter plywood. When I take a look at everything on the edge here, we'll see that there's very little charring. And when I run my finger down that, we'll see that nothing transfers over. So again, very clean cuts. Taking a look at the back side here, we'll see that there's virtually no smoke residue. There's only a little spot every once in a while from when the laser had crossed a part of the middle of the honeycomb. But because we use that honeycomb, all of that smoke was be able to go away underneath that honeycomb and not stain the wood. This is the perfect project to start out when using the X-Tool D1 Pro. In the description down below, I'm gonna have a link to that Pixabay page directly to this art file, making it very easy for you to find that and download and try out on your own. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned some of the tools and applications on how to use and set up the Xtool D1 Pro using the Xtool Creative Space. If you like this video, please consider giving it a like subscribing to the channel, or ring that notification bell. Doing any number of those things really helps me out, but more so, it's a great way to connect content like this with great viewers like you. Until next time, learn, create, and share.